How's it going Rogues Gallery and welcome to another Flesh and Blood video here on Red Zone Rogue. Today I am beyond excited. I was carrying my equipment up to the recording studio with a big grin on my face because today is one of those rare occasions that we can only indulge in a couple times a year. We have a brand new Flesh and Blood set with a lot of details and it looks amazing. I don't want to say any hyperbole here, but it might just be my favorite set since Arcane Rising. I love all the sets, but Arcane Rising is currently my favorite, but I think Uprising might just take the cake. It is so cool, so let's dive into it. We have a lot to talk about. Um, I've had kind of a long weekend, and we had some card previews. We're going to go over all of the card previews we've seen so far for Uprising, as well as delve into the article in flames and um, some other stuff. So... Let's get started here. You can see right off the bat two brand new characters and we're going to talk about these characters in a little bit more detail as we go. But I just kind of wanted to give you a little a little sneak preview of what we have in store because it's so cool. We have a new ninja hero and a new illusionist hero. Very likely both with the draconic talent. Oh, it's so exciting. It is so exciting. So. Let's rewind a little bit. So we'll talk about the new cards for Icelander and the new Draconic talent card a little bit later. Let's talk about the really exciting stuff first. Let's talk about Uprising. So here we have the, the latest Flesh and Blood articles. We have In Flames and Uprising. So we are going to go to In Flames. So first of all, like I mentioned in my previous video talking about Uprising, um, I love the name of this set. There are people in Flesh and Blood at Legend Story Studios who are definite, definite metalheads, and this name is no coincidence. This is, it's one of the best metal bands out there. If you haven't listened to In Flames, definitely listen to In Flames. Definitely not a coincidence. I, yeah, it, it's, it's awesome. We have this splash art, and uh, we have a story. So basically, this is a story told through the perspective of uh, Shiana here, actually. And she is basically acting as a poli uh, political envoy to the kingdom of Volkor, and she seeks an audience with the Emperor. So we're not going to go into it in, in too much detail, but I'll kind of summarize it for you. She's basically um, seeking an audience with the Emperor, who is kind of holed away underneath the volcano, or at least in the secret passage leading to the, the volcano. Uh, Mount Volkor, is that what it's called? Yes, Mount Volkor. The bowels of Mount Volkor and she's like yo if the if the Emperor still won't see me and you know won't help in my um, Fight against the Demonastery because she's like an envoy from Solana seeking aid against the Demonastery You can see here. She talks about that um, And that she thinks that Volkor will be next after Solana Falls here. We have obviously Shiana um, But she's like well there's a new power in Volkor, so if the Emperor won't see me, well, maybe maybe some other people will. Here we have this horrific branding, this card, or with this art called Brand with Cinderclaw, which is very interesting. It's probably this uh, symbol right here is the, the Cinderclaw. Um, we, have, we have a bunch of really, really awesome art here. And so we have some more art, you know, about this uprising. We have these, these rebels with, like, this kind of phoenix symbol fighting possibly the cinder claw i'm not sure if the cinder claw which side of the fight they're they're on we basically have rebels fighting like these um basically Im imperials uh and we have some of that conflict here this is a card called breaking point or at least art from a card called breaking point you can kind of see the name right here this art i love this art i this is called uh, from the ashes and it is one of my favorite pieces of art for Flesh and Blood that I've ever seen. And that's saying a lot because I love the art in Flesh and Blood. It is so good. I, I love this art so much that I went ahead and I, um, you can't see it, but it's the background art and on my phone now because it is so cool. This, this character here, this ninja, this, um, like draconic ninja is so cool. And I kind of want to, I shared a little bit of this on my, on the channel here and, um, here we have uh, what I said. I said, holy shit, I love this character, and I do love this character. Doesn't look like she's going to be one of the heroes, which is a little disappointing. I would love to see her as a hero. But uh, someone commented on here that they were like, they thought this art, like, is such, so my style that they thought that I commissioned it. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, it really looks like something you commissioned. I had to double check to see if it said RZR or Fab. 
that's how much this is my style that other folks think I commissioned this. I, I freaking love this. So huge shout out to Flesh and Blood, the art team, everyone involved in the creative side of this, Robbie One, everyone. This is so amazing. I freaking love it so much. And it's funny because I am actually com working with a Flesh and Blood artist, Emanuela Crovius, to commission a piece of splash art featuring our brand new character, Veya, fighting dragons in Volcor. So here's a little sneak preview of that. This is just the rough color, so it's going to be much, 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 much more detailed and refined. Crovius is an absolutely brilliant artist. Um, she did Spears of Surreality and a bunch of really, really, really awesome Flesh and Blood cards. So one of my favorite artists in the game. And so here we have our brand new character, Veya, fighting dragons in Volcor. And we did not plan this. I didn't know about Uprising. We've been working on this for months. So it could not be better planned if I had even known about it. So that's insane. So the fact that we have something like this and then we have this. Obviously, she's not a ninja, but she's still like a you know silver-haired warrior lady silver haired ninja lady it is so my style i freaking love this and then here we have the uprising splash art which looks freaking awesome we kind of get an idea of what's going on here the rebels storming a temple or maybe the, maybe the palace the front of the palace i'm not sure but in any case uprising is going to be awesome so that's the the flavor kind of side um of this thing we also here we have the credits here like i said we have uh robbie robbie wen as well as um edwin rachel and sam dude sam is absolutely killing it here i'll show you some other stuff too so let's move on to the piece de resistance uprising so uprising is a standalone booster set that plunges fans into a brutal civil war sweeping across the harsh and unforgiving land of Volcor. Dromai, an imperial illusionist, which is this, this fine lady right here, um, able to conjure the legendary dragons of Volcor out of Aether and Ash, faces off against Phi, a hot-headed ninja who spearheads the Uprising, capital U, against the Draconian, I love the name there, Draconian oppression of the Imperials, while Icelander journeys from her icy homestead in search of answers to painful questions seared deep within her mind. And so we have um, Dromai and Phi are going to be the two new characters, and this this awesome looking dude who looks like the protagonist of an anime series. Doesn't this guy look like he could be straight out of like Demon Slayer? Yeah, he looks so, he looks so cool. Um, the art of this guy, of Phi, is done by Sam Yang. Sam, dude, if you're watching this, you're absolutely slaying it. This looks so good. Dude, I, I didn't think you can get better, but this looks, this looks even better. Like, it's so good. Both of these art pieces are amazing and there's some really interesting stuff going on with these two characters and we'll get to that in just a second uprising is designed for exceptional booster draft sealed deck and constructed play and includes incredible marvels that will leave players and collectors in awe we have examples of this kind of stuff so let's take a look at it marvels here we have some of the new marvel designs featuring and draconic illusionist dragon ally that's, that's a lot to take in but let's take a look at it. Perhaps forged within the furnace uh, heart of Volcor itself, Uprising features works of art so stunning they can only be described as marvels. This dragon looks freaking awesome. Uprising introduces the new Marvel rarity, each one having a carefully crafted design feature that uh, sets it apart from its regular printing. Discover the incredible marvels of Volcor and the secrets that dwell within or beneath their surface. So I love, love what they're doing here. I love this full art treatment with like these really, really cool, flavorful, draconic border, like of the um, the text box here. I love the fact that you can just get like a normal one that'll probably be pretty cheap. And then you can have like this super spicy, expensive one. Absolutely love that. You have the pieces for the players, you have the pieces for the collectors, and hopefully everyone is happy. I know I'm gonna be happy because this looks awesome. This looks so, so cool. This card is also very interesting. So we have six attack and six health, very reminiscent of something like, um, you know, Urser and um, the the other one <laughs> whose name I can't remember, um, Blasmafet. There we go. Uh, it's interesting that this is not a token. This is a majestic, um, and it also you know it's an ally, so it doesn't have like a cost or a pitch or anything. This is going to be something that you bring into play after fulfilling some sort of requirement, probably similar to. 
Ursar and and whatnot. Also says whenever a Dracona Optimi attacks a hero, reveal the top three cards of your deck. He deals arcane damage equal to twice the number of red cards revealed this way to them or an ally you control. I wonder if the Draconic mechanic has to do with red pitch cards. Very, very interesting. Or maybe that's just the Draconic Illusionist um, kind of like gimmick. I don't know. It looks cool. I'm really excited to see more of this. Oh, the dragon stuff is so, so badass. And then here we have some key dates. This is actually pretty important. So card preview season starts June 4th. This is not card preview season. What we saw with Icelander is not card preview season. It looks like we'll have an actual preview season, and I hope I get some spicy stuff. Um, June 4th. Really, really looking forward to this. Um, yeah, and I'm pretty excited for this date in particular because it gives me some time to calm down, to chill out, and make some awesome video uh, about you know, preview season and all that kind of stuff after the Pro Tour. World premiere events. So this is, um, we didn't know this, that this was going to happen. Las Vegas, uh, Madrid, Sydney, June 10th to the 12th. Um, Las Vegas, world premiere event. So the Tales of Aria world premiere event was a slam dunk. One of the most fun I've ever had at any event in my life. And so I'm going to be <laughs> I'm gonna be going to this. I don't know if there's going to be a calling or if I'm going to be doing coverage or anything like that, but I'm going to, I'm, I'm not missing this. So yeah, I'll be there. Um, and also Las Vegas is a lot closer for me <laughs> than like New Jersey or like Orlando or something. Uh, pre-release events in scheduled uh, selected stores, June 18th to the 19th. So we have pre-releases 18th to the 19th. And then the release date is June 24th. You can bet that I will also be attending my local pre-releases. Shout out to everyone who attends their local pre-releases. And then we have Uprising product configuration. It's a 226 card set with one fabled, six legendary, 27 majestic, 51 rares, and then so on and so forth. 16 tokens is a lot of tokens too. Uh, 16 cards per pack, 24 packs per display, four displays per case, pretty standard stuff. Uh, designed for booster draft, seal deck, and constructed play. Unfortunately, this will be the only set designed like this this year because we know the next flesh and blood set is going to be a supplemental set it's something that james said in the team covenant interview or maybe he said it in fab 2.0 that we're going to be doing big set supplemental set big set supplemental set from now on and that's just because um they realize that they want to give more support to all of the classes more frequently, right? And that's what supplemental sets can do. Um, unfortunately, that means less draft sets, which is a bummer because I love draft sets, but I understand why they're doing it for the health of the game, and it makes a lot of sense. It contains cold foils. It's a fully recyclable uh, paper booster wrappers. I freaking love these, so I'm so glad that they're bringing these back. Um, and then it has your MSRPs and map, uh, you know, less 20%, you know. All, all this kind of all this kind of stuff we also have like the uprising logo which looks really cool the booster pack and the booster uh, display so let's kind of open these up in separate little tabs so here we have the booster pack looks fantastic we have like this dragon versus a phoenix or something like that which maybe symbolizes um the two heroes we have the illusionist with the dragon and the ninja with the phoenix i think that's kind of like what they're going on here but no no uh icelander stuff here and then we have the booster box, which, which looks rad as hell. Dude, this looks so cool. After coming down from like the, yeah, nice, happy Everfest, it's just like fire and death. It's awesome. Um, Uprising Blitz deck con uh, configuration. So we're going to have Blitz decks. This is super, super, super interesting. So Blitz, de Blitz decks are still going to be 12 bucks USD, but there's no Icelander. We know that there's going to be three heroes. We know there's going to be Fi, Dromai, and then Icelander because it says that up here, right? It says we have Dromai. It says we have uh, Fi, and then we have Icelander. So we know we're, there's going to be three heroes in the set. And plus we've seen the Icelander cards with the, the, the set, um, the set uh, denotation at the bottom of the card. We've seen the Icelander cards with, with this down here. So it's really interesting that they're not putting Icelander in a blitz deck like a, a starter deck it's only um it's only the ninja and the illusionist so really interesting these are the ones right here let's take a look at them by the way i think that, that looks awesome and this also gives us a little sneak preview of the art for the young versions so here we have Fi. um definitely sam yang art again freaking awesome you can i can kind of tell his style here um absolutely love this this looks awesome i will definitely be opening these and doing a, re a proper review of them um but i'm really excited to see the blitz decks return they're just a great way to get people into the game and then here we have dromai uh, out of the two obviously i like dromai she is very pretty but she's playing a board game dude look at this 
anyone playing <laughs> playing board games or some sort of game. I'm not sure what this is. It's not like Shogi or anything. Some sort of uh, board game native to the world of Wraith, but uh, instant favorite character. Girl plays board games. Yeah, I, I I can relate, and and I like her. Also, she looks just awesome. So yeah, it's just these two characters, and you can tell that because here's the the box for the Blitz decks. It's just the two. And it even says on the product page that there's eight decks per display, four of each hero. And here we have four of each hero, eight decks on display. So no Icelander. It also says it right here. Um, where does it say? It says it's somewhere else, um, perhaps on the product display page. We'll take a look at that in just a second. But yeah. So yeah, once again, no Icelander. Kind of weird, but it, I don't know. I'm, I'm curious as to the reason why. This is probably a good reason, but... I'm very curious as to, to why. And here we just have Uprising releasing June 4th, world premiere events. So here we have more information on the world premiere events. I'll be honest, I haven't actually read all of this. I just saw world premiere event and I'm like, I'm in. I'm in. So world premiere events. First of all, look at this art. Look at these dragons, dude. Um, rally your friends and join the Uprising at a world premiere event uh, weekend running June 10 to the 12th in Madrid, Las Vegas, and Sydney. Celebrate the release of Uprising with a massive sealed deck event on Friday, yo, and Team Blitz calling. So there's a calling. Team Blitz calling, yo, dude. Okay, I I'm so excited for this. Team Blitz calling. I want to play in this, man. I mean, there's also the coverage side, but oh, I love team events. Team events are like the best. On Saturday, three different heroes per team. Oh, this is so fun. I can't I can't wait for this. Uh, and for those who like to battle until the very end, a battle hardened to round off the weekend on Sunday. Okay, dude, this seems so much fun. The sealed the sealed event um, for uh, Aria was so much fun. So even if I do coverage for the this calling, I'm definitely gonna be playing in this sealed deck. Uh, the legendary dragons of Volcor are descending upon world premiere events with a with a legendary dragons of Volcor playmat, yo! Exclusive to the Uprising world premiere event. Plus, uh, event specific legendary dragons of Volcor dragon shield sleeves! Dude! <laughs> Dude! Dragon shield, yo! A sponsor of, of this channel, check out uh, links uh, in the description down below for my affiliate link with dragon shield. Um, not even joking. Uh, with event uh, event details and uh, each of the event specific sleeves to be revealed on Fab TCG over the next three days, dude. Yo, three days. Um, I'm, so, I'm so stoked. Uh, bring people together in the flesh and blood. Hell yeah! And then we have some more stuff, uh, including the actual um, event pages for all of this kind of stuff. And then we have some assets here. So this is what I wanted to see. The, the product sheet. We also have the card image gallery. This is not going to unlock until June 4th, um, as well as the journey into the forgotten. I'm going to open this in a new tab right here because we're going to take a look at some of the Icelander cards in this video as well. So let's take a look at this product uh, sheet. Um, so here we have the Volcor Uprising product sheet. Looks awesome. Looks so cool. Dude, this looks so good. I love this purple color. Uh, world premiere. All right, all right. So we have preview season, June. This is just stuff we've seen before. But, um, you know, we're just going to kind of kind of go over it here. We do have a rarity distribution here. I think this is the same stuff that we always see. Barcodes. One thing interesting about the barcodes is this one. This one definitely confirms that there's no Icelander because we have barcodes for um, uh, the Dromai deck and the Phi deck. No Icelander deck. So, yeah, definitely, definitely 100% no Icelander here, which is very, very interesting. This is what I was, like, mentioning before in terms of, like, Confirming that there's no Icelander. Um, and then we have this kind of stuff. So yeah, I I'm unbelievably excited for Uprising. Let's take a look at those cards that we didn't look at in the last couple days uh, because I was busy. So we have Journey into the Forgotten. This was a great story. Highly recommend reading it. I talked about it in the last video. Um, but let's actually take a look at Icelander's Journey and take a look at those cards. So we do have some cards here that I haven't talked about. We have uh, a few. We're going to open these up in new tabs. And we'll, we'll take a look at them. And by a few, I mean we have a lot. <laughs> we have a lot. I'll, I'll kind of give some quick impressions um, and not not dwell too much. So we have Ice Eternal, which has an XX in the casting cost. So X has to be the same number here. Um, it's an Icelander specialization. Blocks for three. It's blue, which is great, which means you can play it at instant speed with Icelander on your opponent's turn. It has Ice Fusion. Create X Frostbite tokens under target hero's control. Then if Ice Eternal was fused, deal arcane damage to that hero equal to the number of Frostbite tokens they control. This card is great. You just 
dump a lot of frostbite tokens on them and um, go to town. There's some really interesting stuff with this because you can do this, like, if you're going to do this at instant speed, you can wait until they've already played a lot of stuff and then drop this. And so they have a bunch of um, bunch of tokens at the end of their turn, which is relevant for another card we'll talk about. Uh, here we have Ice Bind. This is the blue version, but it will have yellow and red. Zero drop, three block, which is great. Um, it says Ice Fusion, deal one arcane damage to any target. If Ice Bind was fused uh, and deals damage to a hero, freeze a card in their arsenal until the start of their next turn. And then the frozen object can't be played or activated. So pretty good, pretty good tech for zero from your arsenal for free with Icelander is uh, pretty good at instant speed. Next we have Frost Hex. First of all, this is an elemental wizard action. That should be noted because uh, it's not an ice card, so it won't, will not trigger Icelander's ability to generate the Frostbite token when you play it, but you can still play it. Um, as opposed to this, which is an ice wizard action. Affliction Aura. This card is nuts. This card's nuts. It's a three drop. Blocks for three. This is the other Icelander specialization. This one is the Majestic, and the other one is a Rare. This one says uh, it's an Icelander specialization. It's an Affliction Aura. An Affliction enters the arena under an opposing hero's control. So you give it to your opponent. Frostbites you control have, at the beginning of your end phase, this deals one arcane damage to you. So you probably want to drop this at the end of your opponent's turn if you want to deal some damage. You know, drop this at the end of your opponent's turn, or before the end of your opponent's turn, and then, you know, Frost Hex will do a bunch of bunch of damage, which is which is really nice. Um, I should also note that this doesn't go away; it just hangs around. It just stays there. Um, so you can like stack up three of these on your opponent, and um, it 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 could get out of control. I can see I can see some lines here where this this can get really out of control. Next, we have Hypothermia. This is another blue pitch card, zero cost, which means, once again, blue pitch, you can play it from Icelander's Arsenal for free on your opponent's turn. It's also an affliction. Attacks you control can't, get go can't gain go again. This does not affect attacks that naturally have go again. So that's very interesting. It doesn't just hose over go again, but it hoses over gaining go again. It also says, at the beginning of your end phase, destroy Hypothermia. So this is a card that you play on your opponent's turn at instant speed. And, um, or maybe you could just play it on your turn. Whatever. Play this uh, on your opponent, and they can't have go again for that turn. Or can't gain go again for that turn. So, seems like a sideboard tech, um, but a pretty powerful one against certain decks, for sure. Next, we have Cold Snap. Um, this art is insane. I love the colors here. And, uh, dude, so I don't know how to pronounce your name. I'm really bad at this. But, yeah, y'all should check out this guy. Um, Matthews. Mathieu's on he's pretty active on like Twitter and stuff uh, great artist. So Anyway, yeah, this looks this looks awesome. So this is a one drop. This is another card that will have yellow and red versions a Target hero may pay one if they don't freeze a card in their arsenal or an ally they control until the start of the next turn You can freeze those dragons um, If it's played from arsenal draw a card go again. This card's great. This, I think this card's really really sweet for um, Icelander for sure just playing the card getting an effect. Uh, it's an ice card. So it will um Give them a frostbite token as per Icelander's ability, and then also get a draw card. Yeah, seems really, really good. And then finally, oh, oh, finally, we can talk about Thaw. Thaw is a draconic attack action. Blocks for two, which is uh, interesting. Uh, this is a two cost six attack card. So this is a pretty common breakpoint here, two for six. Uh, while Thaw is in your graveyard, at the start of your turn, you may banish it, and then you get one of these effects. You get to destroy a frostbite, destroy an ice affliction card, or unfreeze target frozen cards. So this is going to be a good way to destroy those pesky frost hexes, right? So this is going to be a great sideboard card versus the ice deck. And that's kind of what this is. This is just a great sideboard card. Also, this art is freaking gorgeous by uh, Huang Lop. I apologize if I'm, I pronounce your name wrong again, but holy freaking hell, dude. This looks so good. This is beautiful. This looks like... I don't know. I'm currently reading a manga called Claymore. This kind of just reminds me of Claymore for some reason. Anyway, it's it's awesome. So, yeah, those those are the cards so far that we've seen. I'm so excited. I can't tell you how excited I am for Uprising. This set looks like an absolute slam dunk. It is so cool. Pun intended. Definitely pun intended. And um, it, it might just be... I know everyone says this every set. Like, oh, this set's my favorite set. My, my favorite set is still Arcane Rising, but Uprising is giving it a hell of a run for its money. I love everything here. Oh, I, I, I love this so much. This is so my vibe. So, 
yeah um cannot wait cannot wait for uprising thank you for watching today please let me know what you think of uprising in the comments down below and um tell me what your favorite hero is from this set you know we we have we have uh fi and dromai and then icelander which one is your favorite hero um out of the three i mean dromai i mean come on she was playing a board game she's definitely like she, she's awesome but i mean like but also the sam yang art on fi is so good he looks so cool like I said, he, he totally looks like he's from Demon Slayer. He could be the next um, Fire Hashira or whatever. <laughs> now we're getting in, a little bit into the weeds. Thank you so much for watching, everyone. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. And we'll see you next time.